All right, thank you for staying with the Monday Report. The discussion starts now. A healthcare system in crisis because the doctor strike has entered day 12. The clinical officers say they too are down in their tools on the 4th of April. Is there an end in sight? That is the conversation we're having. And let me introduce my guest, starting from my father's right. Dr. Dav Giatella is here. He's the Secretary General KMPDU. That is a Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Union. Thank you so much for making time. Next is Dr. Sultan Matendechero. He's the Deputy Director General, Ministry of Health. Thank you very much for making time. And Peter Washira, who is the Chairperson, Kenya Union of Clinical Officers. Thank you very much for making time. And Martin Dechero, I'll start with you on this. What is this strike about? And is, is the government doing anything to stop this strike? Yeah, so thank you very much, uh, Trevor, for having me here. Um, to the best of my understanding, uh, the strike uh, is about a whole range of uh, issues. Uh, we received a strike notice, and uh, from the strike notice, I counted up to 22 uh, demands from the union. Yeah, but uh, the ones that are sticking out, of course, uh, one of the, the key ones is around the posting of interns. Uh, these are graduate doctors who uh, have just uh, completed their training and who are getting into uh, placement. And then uh, there was also the issue of uh, registrars. Those are now doctors who have completed their internship and have worked for some time. And now they are going to specialize. Uh, then there was uh, an issue about some areas that are supposed to be paid for basic salary. And uh, there was a fourth one, which I've mm -hmm. forgotten, I think. Oh, no, yeah. the issue of uh, insurance, yeah. comprehensive insurance for doctors. I think those are the ones that are coming out uh, very strongly among the full range of 22. Although now I can hear people talking about 19 issues, yeah. so I don't know which one. But are you doing anything about it as a government? I started there so that we, we are on the same page, because it seems to be everybody is reading from a different script. Yeah, so um, of course, as government, uh, our biggest intention is to ensure that uh, services are running and Kenyans are receiving uh, the services that they need, especially healthcare being an essential service. Uh, we are really trying to do everything uh, within uh, our means uh, to ensure that uh, services are running. Of course, there's a very big strain, uh, but uh, you know we have come out, especially at the level of management, uh, just to be able to see uh, the strained resources. You can imagine that uh, right now the health workforce is already uh, below what we are supposed to have. And with the doctors out on the street, uh, instead of uh, being in the hospitals, we are already seeing that uh, this is increasing the strain. So we are really trying to work with uh, whatever we have just to ensure that uh, some of the critical services, especially emergency services yeah. and so on, are running and where possible uh, most of the patients are able to get the services they need uh, without uh, a lot of interruption. Yeah. As a Deputy Director General, would you say the government is committed to ending this strike? Absolutely. I, I think... Uh, I have not seen this kind of uh, engagement, uh, especially at the highest level of government. And uh, you will also uh, agree with me that uh, so far we have seen uh, engagement from very high uh, level government offices. Uh, we have not once or twice, we've had the meetings uh, late into the night, sometimes even into the next day. Uh, just trying to engage to see how we can be able to resolve this uh, impasse. So we are actually doing, everybody is doing everything within their ability uh, to try and make sure that uh, now we try to move towards the same place. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me as an individual, the way I look at it is that uh, we really need to see how we can be able to move uh, towards each other. You know, our colleagues in the union uh, to move uh, towards uh, us and us as government to move towards our colleagues so that we can get to a compromise. Because at the end of the day, uh, if we do not do that, then it is uh, the innocent uh, patients who continue to suffer. Yeah. yeah. Davji, are you seeing the commitment from government? You've been here several times and we've talked about the issues that you raised, but are you seeing commitment from government to deal uh, with the doctor's strike? You know, commitment uh, that is provided or that is shown during strikes without resolution cannot be termed commitment. Because yes, we've been having engagements and we've had more than six meetings with government. Even from Thursday, there was a meeting on Friday, there was a meeting today, there's a meeting still ongoing. But then you realize that the government did not even read the strike notice or understood it well because the, the, most of these meetings, there's just a back and forth 
aspect into the issues. And I must say that the strike that we are on is government fuel strike because they failed in their obligations and in their previous commitments over the same issues that we brought up now. Uh, for example, if you look at the issue of posting of medical interns, there's an issue that was discussed last year. It has been recurrent, and there was a commitment that it's something that will never recur again. But you realize that it has recurred to the extent that the ministry has gone ahead to reduce their wages by 91%. Probably it may, some may, somebody may not understand the reasons why that happened, yet we have technical persons like uh, Dr. Manuel Chinichero at the ministry. We have the issues of the CBA that in, it's in itself, there's a court judgment that, comp that compels the government to pay it 600, 612 days ago. So you see somebody and having not paid that after committing to pay last year means there's a concern. There's an issue of postgraduate training. We've had several commitments of this particular thing because when you graduate as a doctor, you get bonded to the, to the county until the number of years that you are away from postgraduate training. That is something that we'll be discussing every year. We've had demonstrations about it. We have. In, you have postgraduate doctors who have turned into who have been turned into slaves in the hospitals. He works in Kenyatta National Hospital, or in KUTRH, or in Nakuru County as the Cossacks. These doctors are doing these services in these particular hospitals as self-sponsored doctors. They are in the rota, daily rotas, but there's no any remunerations that they are getting there. They have to. Uh, uh, study during the day and go to a private hospital at night. Yeah. So those are some of the issues that we have in this particular notice. We have shortage of doctors across the country yeah. in the facilities to the, to the tune that the, it will take the, the government 50 years mm. to reach the WHO ratio of 1 to 1,000. At the same time, we have unemployed health workforce, yet we have agenda of UHC. So that, those are some of the disconnect that yeah. are existing that we are looking for a solution to them. But what is the compromise? Because Matende Chero is saying that what they're looking the, the, for is some kind we, of compromise. We cannot talk about a compromise when I'm telling you that in our engagement, they are yet to understand what we want. They seem like they've not ever understood it because there's no any offers that we have received from government from the start of engagement. I am telling you, Triva, the strike may prolong for so long, not because of the unions. It's because negotiation or bargaining with government is just like milking stones. Every day you go meeting the government, they do not understand everything. They try to uh, uh, in a way, I uh, started to understand even the CBA. Sometimes when they disown it, in the private rooms, in the, meet in the boardrooms, you have, to, uh, you have to explain to them again as if they have never seen it. Yeah, so these are, those are some of the reasons why you find the strikes prolonging. Yeah. But when we say we want to commit or write uh, a return to a formula for agreement, they will write anything because they know they will not implement. We have had this last year in, in, in January. We've had this uh, agreement being written. We've had meetings. But now the implementation aspect of it then lacks with the government. That's why sometimes you end up having a prolonged strike so that you can get the result at hand rather than saying, okay, let's give a goodwill. Yeah. But then the day you give the goodwill is the day the issues that you are discussing is forgotten. This prolonged strike you're talking about, patients are literally dying and people are suffering. Are you concerned that yours is not just another profession like any other? Yours is literally a matter of life and death. It is a difficult uh, thing, actually, to issue a strike notice for doctors. For the doctors to actually go on the street is not for fun. That's why the last strike that we had is seven years ago. And before that, the last strike we had was carried out by Dr. Martinichiro. The reality is that we do not take strikes for fun, and it becomes a very difficult decision to make. But sometimes, because being a doctor or being working in the hospitals for that, price, for that mercy does not pay your bills. Yes, you say it's a calling, but the calling that you have, if you go to a petrol station, you won't say that, no, I have been called to be a doctor, I have a, I'm licensed, now I'll fill my car. Or you can say that your landlord comes in the night and tells you you want the, 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 the rent, you say, no, I have my lab coat and my stethoscope and my doctor, now let the rent be. So it is because of that. It is because there is no any way to put these high-level meetings that he's talking about now without going. So essentially, if there are any casualties that come as a result of strikes, yes. it is the government that actually bear the old blame of this. Okay. Otherwise, if they would be engaging in good faith and implementing those agreements, nobody would be going on strike. Okay. Yes. There's no goodwill, Matende Chero. The KMPD official now says there's no goodwill. But I'll come to you for response on that. Let me bring in Peterson uh, Washira on this. Washira, you too are now going to down your tools on the 4th of April. Why now? This is, some people would argue this is the worst possible timing. We're dealing with one crisis and you want to add another one. Mm. 
Thank you, Trevor, and uh, thank you for hosting me. And uh, let me correct you. It's not on 4th. It's on 1st. That's on first Monday of next week. Yes. It's even sooner than we thought. It's yeah, on it fast. is. And, uh, and I think um, we have really given the government a lot of time. Uh, I think as a union, we are a testament the, of lack of the commitment from the government. On 4th of this month, we jointly came together, together with the KMPDU, together with the other unions, and did a petition that uh, we served to all the offices that matter. We served to the Ministry of Health, to the Council of Governors, to the Treasury. We served to both houses of the Parliament. Um, but we never saw anything. We, we never saw uh, anything tangible coming out of it. So on 18th, uh, when we realized that nothing was going to happen, we still came out, out of goodwill. And you saw as we declared publicly that we are still giving the government seven more days, but as we give you the seven more days, we are going to consult members. And so last week we went uh, back to the members, and members said that uh, you have tried diplomacy, it has not worked. Now we have to go for a strike. Trevor, um, on 8th November last year, the Labour Court gave a directive to the employers, both the Ministry of Health and the Council of Governors, to resume CBA negotiations. We served uh, the Ministry and the Council of Governors. The Ministry came at the table. But then, since then, we have actually not been able to move. They have ensured, they frustrate the process. They bring you to the table, but then they frustrate you. They, they treat you to a suckers until you're frustrated. And then on the other side, the Council of Governors completely declined to come to the table. So for us as clinic officers, and by the, we are not going on strike because the doctors are on strike or, or because it looks like a, stri a strike season. Yeah. It is because we have no other option left. If you look at the Labor Relations Act, the options that you are given when you have a dispute, number one, you negotiate with the employer. Yeah. When you don't agree, then you go for conciliation under the Ministry of Labor. We did that, and the conciliator gave a report saying that he has not been able to conciliate us. And then we went to the Labor Court. We, worked for a, we went for a strike. Then the employer, our, the employer, that is the Ministry and the Council of Governors, they took us to court. And we did a counter demand. We asked the judge, now you cannot tell us to go back to work yeah. without providing a solution. Okay. Um, so the court itself, then gave a directive last year and said, can you come back to the table and conclude on this CBA? But then they refused. So what can we do as clinic officers? I think we don't have actually any other option. And uh, this is where usually now it is very frustrating when it comes to dealing with government, that we expect anybody else to follow the law. We expect anybody else uh, to comply to the directives of the court. Mm -hmm. But then uh, the people who are supposed to lead, they do this with impunity. And we have even tried out of our way to reach out to especially the Council of Governors so that they can come to the table. Yeah. But uh, nothing is coming forth. And the issues, Trevor, you know, it's not even about the money. Some of the issues are issues that we would have actually solved a long time ago. Yeah. Like a career progression guideline, which is a scheme of service. Now uh, the PSC has changed from schemes of service to career progression guideline. The one that um, uh, shows how somebody is able to progress within their profession, yeah. that is something that is non-monetary, something that we would have done. Some of the issues like uh, promotions that we are going on strike about, <laughs> These are issues that are in the policy. They are very well provided for. But somebody has just decided they are not going to be done. And so when it comes to the collective bargaining agreement, because that is the document that secures us, and we have seen a very bad trend. The Auditor General is um, raising queries about um, allowances that we negotiated in uh, 2017 and they are being termed irregular. Mm. And we are reading between the lines, 
and we don't know. We are thinking probably this government is trying to do something, and probably because we have already seen them reduce the pay for the interns, probably they are looking for other ways to reduce also our pay. Okay. And so we must protect it. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, an agreement. Yeah with the Ministry of Health, which we signed uh, in 2021, as we were going back to work, that has not been implemented. Okay. We have many agreements. You remember when we had a summit, and we talked about uh, extension of the UHC contracts. Mm -hmm. In the same document, they also directed the employers to ensure that they conclude the CBAs and implement the CBAs. That was, uh, I, I think, last year, early last year. Yeah. Now, we then went to uh, Kericho, well, the whole of the government approach was there, as they call it. Yeah. We had a CS for public service, CS for health, um, the COG, and we signed that uh, these contracted staff, the COVID-19 uh, uh, health uh, emergency response, uh, there are some others they called UHC interns. Yes, yeah. they were qualified and they were paid 15000 we have the UHC who are now doing their four years on contract, being paid half of what I'm being paid. And you're in the same rota. Okay. And so they say they were going to ensure that these people are put on PNP. And they, they, but then they do not honor these agreements. Okay. What bring, can we do? Let me bring Matendichero on this. Matendichero, where is the goodwill? Because, okay, fine. For example, the doctors, if they say that they want a thousand interns taken in or employed as permanent, why don't you say we are able to take 500? then we take the other 500. They say that they want their promotions to be done, which is the career progression policy. Why don't you say, okay, this is what we've done. Where is the goodwill? Yeah, so first of all, Trevor, I just wanted to, you know, my colleague uh, Peterson here has said that uh, some of the issues can be very easily solved. I really just want to tell you that uh, when I look at the issues that have been brought to the table, these are things that we can be able to resolve. And uh, I just want to reach out to my colleagues and uh, plead with them and tell them, let's just sit down and deal with these things. We can resolve all of them on the table while patients are receiving uh, treatment. We don't really have to go to the extent of coming out of the hospitals because these are things that we can actually be able to resolve. And then, just for the record, I would like to tell you, Actually, I'm not here to say, oh, we are in a contest of words or anything. I, I don't want that. I am just saying that uh, we really are engaging so that we can be able to find a solution. It's not that who can argue better than the other or whatever. I don't think that is now something that we should pay attention to. Now, coming to the issue of interns, and uh, in the context of we are not really arguing. We are just saying that uh, we have seen an increase in the numbers of interns who are coming out, and for good reason. Because if you look at, uh, say, for example, 2014, we, we were able to get out about 300 interns, slightly less than 300. Now we are talking about, in this financial year, we are looking at uh, about, just for medical officers alone, more than 1,300 interns. So you see that is already an increase of more than four times. So that means that uh, the, the, the financing envelope has really grow, uh, grown. In 2014, we were only dealing with one CADA. Yeah? Only, uh, oh, sorry, we were dealing with three CADAs, the doctors. That is the medical officers, the pharmacists, and uh, the dentists. Now we are dealing with four. Okay? So the numbers have really gone up. When you put all those CADAs together, we are dealing, right now we are talking about a backlog of over 3,500 interns who are supposed to go in. So that, uh, that bill, that uh, wage bill has really gone up. And uh, you know for us, we actually seek for the remuneration. So that's what we have done. Uh, this year, we had our allocation of about 3.7 billion. Our financial year starts in July. So we had our, our allocation of about 3.7 billion. It was not enough to post the interns. Now they are coming out, and for good reason, because we have a shortage of doctors. We want to really be able to produce enough doctors. So in trying to bridge that gap, we are also now facing another challenge of, there are so many and we have to take them all in. So in July last year, we actually posted, across all the four cadres, over 4,000. And that 3.7 billion that was allocated for the whole financial year was not even enough. 
So we really tried, and uh, the cabinet secretary actually told us to ensure that we look for resources from other sources, and we were able to fill in what was required to post the first batch. Knowing that in February, or January, February this year, we will be able to post the second batch. The second batch required 4.9 billion. Remember, we had already superseded our allocation by about 2 billion. So when we wrote to Treasury to get money for supplementary, they said, now look, we are in a very tight fiscal space. It is difficult for us to add another 4.9 billion at this point, okay? So we actually found ourselves in a situation where we cannot post because for you to post, you must have commitment. You must have a budget from Treasury. It is actually <coughs> illegal to post without a budget. Okay. So what happened is that we said, because these people have stayed out for very long, and uh, you know this is a skill that can be lost. If you go out there and you're not practicing, it is a skill that can be lost. What can we do? So we went back again and said, okay, fine. And uh, we said, okay, there are two issues here. Number one, first of all, we need to offer these colleagues an opportunity to practice. Mm -hmm. We do not have the resources to pay them. Now, there are those who actually uh, would even like to go and support their own internship so that they can get licensed yeah. and they do not continue losing out because they cannot practice without these licenses so that they can now cut down on the time lost and then they can get their licenses soon enough and then the time value can allow them to go into the market. So that those willing to go in. Yeah, and they have even said we can come and sign, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, commit ourselves so that we can go and practice our, you know, do our internship without really okay. demanding for pay. Okay. So we said, okay, those ones can afford it. Mm -hmm. There are few. But what about those who cannot afford? And that's how we started saying, okay, now, can we be able to provide something that can just uh, enable them to get maybe transport, you know, something to, to, to be able to, you know, to fend for themselves during this time? Those who cannot afford. They are translating that and it cutting is, the salary. Yeah, and it is not mandatory just yeah. to try and cut down on the time wasted outside. For those who feel that they, yeah. they cannot wait, at least they can have some. This you're doing to, go, to fit within the yeah, budget to go that you in, have. You know, as we try to look at how yeah. the fiscal space can loosen up. Okay. So it is not an issue of reducing salaries or anything. It is just an issue of trying to look at difficulties. At the same time, we are looking at an issue where people are staying out for so long. Yeah. And at the same time, we do not have the resources to post them on a salary. So what can we do? It is just an effort to try and see how we can get a good middle yeah. ground. So it's a middle now, ground. we have also really tried to, you know, we have not just been sitting there and doing nothing. Yeah. We have looked around within uh, the resources that are there, and we have been able to identify resources that can now clear those, uh, you know, the areas that uh, we were talking about in the strike notice for the uh, doctors who are specializing. Those are already qualified doctors, and they are now specializing. They are now pursuing uh, their masters yeah. so that they can become specialists. And they have not been able to pay their fees because at one point we were not able to pay. So we have identified resources to clear those areas yeah. so that some those who are finished can get their certificates. Okay. Those who are still in college can do their exams because sometimes they find it difficult to do exams. Mm -hmm. Small you know, small things, but which count towards what we are talking about. Okay. We have also tried to identify resources yeah. which can now be able to address uh, the areas that uh, were awarded in the CBA 2017, but then to be uh, paid over a period of time. Just trying to see how do we, how do we bridge the gap. Okay. And then with regard to insurance, there is already a plan to be able to see how we can now take care mm of these, uh, you know, whatever is being left out. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, initially we had the comprehensive coverage, which uh, the doctors are complaining that now they are not able to access some of the services. Mm. So we have said that for every employer, because doctors are employed by different employers in government, we have those who are employed by national government, we have those who are employed by county governments. Yeah. We have those who are employed by the national hospitals. So we are saying every employer yeah. should now look at ways in which they can be able to engage yeah. insurance so that they can provide enhanced cover okay. for their doctor. All right, and this is something also the head of public service hopes, Felix Kosgei, talked about, and also Mudomi Njuku, the Tarakaniti governor, and also the chair of the Council of Governors Health Committee. This is what they had to say in regards to this strike. I appeal to the chair of health of governors, we are ready as a government to cooperate. 
but it is not possible to do it in one day. We must have a workable solution where we must trust each other. If you say my internship tafanya within the month of June, ama ifanyo mwazi wa August, waza kulipa ndiyo tupitisha budget, the union should understand. If you say my universal health coverage atuwezi wandika na siku moja, baka ikuwe graduate. Atakitari mbaka walewe. Because at the end of the day, tukienda mukomo baka patients wetu waishe. We are being retrogressive with our health sector, which we are done so much. Our friends, on the other side, once all the interns wanted to recall, the, the interns to be still called interns, and they want to be paid 206,000 as opposed to other interns who are being paid 25,000, 35,000 maximum. And at the same time, they want government to employ all of them at the same time. We have laid down the challenges that the country has when it comes to the fiscal situation. And we have confirmed to them that we are going to see how much we can accommodate them and how many in number are we going to uptake them. Davji, aren't you a bit unreasonable? Because everybody keeps saying that all this can't be done at all. The, the, nobody has said that they don't want to do it. They're just saying it can't be done at a go. They can't take in all the numbers at the same time. Same thing Matende Cheru is saying now. The Council of Governors is saying the same thing. We can't absorb everyone at the same time. There's a physical space to be conscious of. Uh, I think uh, when you look at uh, what Matende Cheru said, that in the year 2012, 2013, there are about 300, 400 interns that were being posted. But then now there are about 950 to 1,000. But if you look at the budget of that year, it was at 1.5 trillion. The budget now we have is at 3.7 trillion. <clears throat> the population also has changed. And the number of Kenyans who need services are also high. So I don't think that is a reason or a physical uh, space or physical budget would be a reason for the delay in posting. I think it is an issue of priority because uh, the budget process uh, uh, of the government, they know very well that annually we need to have this number of interns that need to be posted to actually offer the services within the hospitals in the country. So now the narration that has come whereby they are now planning to do it is after the strike began. Before then, they had gone to the extent of violating the collective bargaining agreement that is signed, that is deposited in court, that describes and prescribes how an intern is supposed to be remunerated. And you see, they have gone to the extent of violating it by 91% in the salary rate that they were giving. It's now that we are discussing that, they, in fact, we're not discussing. As a union, we believe that that CBA and the interns must be posted in that line because that's what was agreed upon and because of the work that they do. So violating that collective bargaining makes any doctor or any worker in this country who has signed a collective bargaining agreement not safe because they, tomorrow they'll come and say, no, we don't have physical budget. But these are, these are personal emoluments that are fixed, that are constant annually. It means somebody did not do his job or is not competent enough for the job that they were doing. That's why we have this scenario. That's one thing. But I must insist that uh, the issue of intern is one of the many reasons why we're on strike. Today they're talking about their looking for funds or getting funds to pay postgraduate uh, fees. Do you know, it is since when? It is from 2018 to date, we've had uh, doctors who are bonded. You're bonded. You go to postgraduate, you study, then you leave your certificate in the university while you go back and bonded in the county. You cannot work anywhere else. You must work in that county for five to six years. So it is just after this particular strike that they're now saying they've gotten the some miracles that are happening that that money is coming to be paid. We have the issue of the basic salary CBA. I am telling you, and I was in a meeting last year, seated with 10 governors, with the cabinet secretary for health, when you we were supposed to commence our strike on 6th. And we have a strong understanding. We believe that goodwill is good to be given to the government. We gave goodwill, and they said the new government at that time, which I know government is a continuum process, but you give a goodwill. That document, that matrix that was signed on behalf of governors by on Sakaja, on behalf of the national government by uh, or the cabinet secretary Nakumicha and Kempu Kebidiu, me, had nothing on it 
was implemented until the time we issue a strike notice. It means that the government just speaks about it. They give commitments, and their commitments end there because they give them as political rhetoric. These issues that we have spelt down, and, and I must say, for the first time, I understand why our strike of 2016, 2017 went for 100 days, because there were continuous commitments that the doctors were receiving, and they give hope up, they, they keep giving hope to the members that these things will be done, then you realize you must take an action and yeah. stand by that particular action okay. till these things are done. Okay. That's why this strike probably may wait until these things that they say that are, are being a cooking be seen. Okay. Yes. I'll take a quick break. When you come back, I'll come to you, Peterson. What are you willing to accept as irreducible minimum? Because yours still has about seven days to go. What has to be put in place now to avert that strike? Because that one has not started. And then we'll come to your views in just a bit. We're coming back in a bit for closing remarks, right? See you in a bit.